Grab your powder puff and your On Till Dawn setting spray because these are the best products for oily skin and a full tutorial to go with it. The first and most important thing for this whole video and the most important takeaway is how you prep your skin. If you have oily skin, it is paramount that you prep your skin properly and that you actually take the time to prep your skin. And that doesn't mean just grabbing a primer that's gonna keep you matte all day and have all these claims that's gonna smooth your skin, keep you shine free for all these hours, no, no, no. The best way to prep your skin for makeup if you have oily skin is to start with a very good, very basic skin prep. The first thing that I use and that I grab in my pro kit, and I use this honestly universally, but I do notice that this works incredibly well for oily skin. This is one of the best products to naturally balance your skin. So if you are producing a lot of oil throughout the day, usually it means that there's something going on underneath like dehydration. A lot of people don't wanna hear that, but trust me, I speak from experience. This is the truth. Our skin throughout the day, if you're getting excessively oily, you might wanna look at your skin prep. Are you giving your skin enough hydration to start the day? Are you properly cleansing it? Are you properly exfoliating it? There's so many things that go into why we get super oily throughout the day. And this is something that took me most of my adult life to figure out. Without getting too far into it, I do have some really intense and extensive videos on how to prep your skin based on your skin type. So we're gonna keep this portion of the video just a little bit more simple. And if you wanna check out those videos, I'll have them linked below. But to prep skin, I love this product. I love any liquid exfoliator. This one's from Naturium. It's extremely affordable. In fact, I broke the cap off in this part. So let me actually open the cap. What I use on my oily skin clients, like I said, on set or for myself is a liquid exfoliator. This is such a great way to just remove gently that top layer of dirt, impurities, oil, all those things that you want to completely eliminate before you go into your makeup application because those things are gonna come to the surface even more and they're gonna get even more noticeable and they're gonna create this like slippage on your skin with your makeup. So you wanna make sure you're starting with the most clean and gently exfoliated face possible. I can't stress this enough. If you are someone who has oily skin, and listen, I'm not a skincare expert. However, I do have a lot of experience working with tons of skin. I've been doing makeup for 16 years now, 16 years this year. And so I've seen a lot of skin. I've touched a lot of skin. I've, I've sat and listened to a ton of skin problems with the people that come and sit in my chair. More times than not, I'm always shocked at how little people exfoliate their skin. And also I can see it too. I can visibly see as far as texture and the way their skin, the way their makeup sits on their skin, I can tell if someone's not really taking the time to exfoliate. And I don't mean a St. Ives scrub that feels like sandpaper. I mean a nice, gentle, liquid exfoliator. So this is a great one, even if it's for everyday use, if your skin can tolerate it, some people can, some people can't. You just kind of have to figure it out, you know, what your path is, if you can handle this every day. I can handle something like this every day. A lot of my clients that I see on a regular basis can handle it, you know, multiple times a week. So start slow, build up, see how your skin handles it. But I'm telling you, you will see the biggest improvement in the way your makeup lays on your skin. And if you have oily skin, you will notice how much more balanced your skin is going into your makeup application because you've given it this nice first prep and clean slate for the rest of your products to go on top. So now that that is on, my skin is exfoliated, it's gentle. I'm not gonna rinse this off, there's no need for that, but what it does too, that you can't really see, but if you touched my skin, it's so soft to the touch, it really feels so ready for the rest of my products to just sit on top in a really nice way. So for oily skin, you still have to hydrate and moisturize, but I really like to find products that do the same thing all in one, so I don't have to overdo it with too many layers if I have like someone with oily skin in my chair, something that's really important to me. I try to find products that are multitasking, they will give hydration, moisture, and even better, even better if you can find something that gives you sun protection, then you have found the best products in the world for your oily skin. This is a product that I recommend to anybody who asks me, whether it's in person, online, I need a good SPF, but I have such oily skin and I hate the way it makes my skin feel. And I, I can't even tell you how much I relate to that sentence when people say that to me. I it, it really hits me, it really resonates with me because it's something I struggled with and it's one of the reasons why, I hate to admit it, but I didn't wear sunscreen for a lot of years. Okay, a lot, I don't even know how many years, but a lot of my adult years, probably majority of my 20s, I don't think I ever wore sunscreen. All the sunscreens I ever tried felt horrible on my oily skin. I know this is dramatic, but they felt disgusting on my oily skin. So the last thing I wanted to do was put that on my skin and then feel like, even more greasy and 
slimy throughout the day. <laughs> If you know, you know. So it's really hard to find a good sunscreen. This one from Biore. It's the UV Watery Essence. It has SPF 50 plus. PA plus 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 plus. Don't, don't ask me what that means. All I can tell you is it's better for you than a sunscreen that doesn't have all the pluses in it. So it's a really great sun protection. It's SPF 50. What more could you ask for? The best part about this and the reason why I recommend this for so many people is what you can do, first of all, it doesn't matter if you use a ton of it, it melts into your skin and absorbs like water, but it leaves you with long lasting hydration and moisture to your skin. So you're really gonna get the best of everything you could possibly need. You're gonna get hydration, a long lasting moisturized effect, and you're gonna get the sun protection, but also more importantly for the topic of this video, this is going to lay so incredible on your makeup if you have oily skin. I mean, I have yet to find another sunscreen that rivals this one that I would recommend for a really oily skin type person. I'm gonna apply a little bit more on my forehead because I clearly miss that area. Another thing too I wanna mention is it's extremely affordable. You can get on Amazon, you can get on, I think a few other websites. I'm not sure who else cares that I always just get on Amazon to be honest and it's really quick and easy, but it's extremely affordable. I go through tubes and tubes and tubes. Let me just put a little bit on my neck just because I probably will pop out of the studio after this and grab a boba drink. I don't want to have some protection from the sun. The other thing I want to mention too is it is, it's almost impossible to get this product to pill. And if you know, you know, pilling is a, a really big issue or it can be in terms of like layering your skincare products and also your makeup on top. This is never pilled with any of the combos that I've tried. And I've tried this with so many different like serums underneath different foundations, even put moisturizers on top of it, and it is just perfect. So as I was talking, it's already absorbed into my skin. It's already completely dried down for the most part. My skin feels great. It feels hydrated. It feels plumped. It feels like I was given it. I gave it everything it possibly needs. So whether I produce oil throughout the day, it's totally fine, but this is not going to add to it. So it's not gonna to add to an oily effect if you already are struggling with that. And the fact that you already hydrate your skin and you gave it that first skin prep with that liquid exfoliator, your skin's already going into your makeup application, really well balanced, feeling like it's got everything it needs, and you're just set for success. If you do it that way, you are set up for success. Now, as you know on this channel, if you're not new to my channel, or if you know me personally, you know that I'm not a big primer person, but I always say there is a time and a place for when primers are necessary. If you have very, very oily skin, you're gonna wanna use a primer. Now, maybe not for every single day of your life, but when you have oily skin and you want your makeup to stay put and stay matte for longer periods of time, like let's say you have, you're working all day and then you have an evening event, like a dinner or a party or something like that, a social gathering, that's your time to, to bust out the primer. A primer that I actually really like, and I've actually always liked the primers from Smashbox, they're some primers I've used for many, many years in my Pro Kit. This is a newer one to me, but I, I've i liked it a lot. So this is the Photo Finish, just like the original one is a like Photo Finish. It's really obviously great for photos. It smooths your skin, gives you a really flawless finish to your skin, but this one's mattifying. So this is a mattifying primer. It has control to it. So it's got different ingredients to help combat oil throughout the day. So I'm taking a small amount and honestly, I won't even use all of this. But for me personally, the areas that I'll still get oily throughout the day are always around my nose. So right in this area, I'm just going to push this in. Now skip using a brush for this product. You wanna really make sure you're, you're pushing and melting that product into your skin. You want it to be nice and fully pushed on, not just sitting on top of your skin, but rather like really like get it onto your pores. If you have oily skin and larger pores, this is especially important. When I'm working with models, in fact, I just had one sit in my chair the other day and she was like, I'm so oily. I'm like, scale of one to 10. She was like an 11. I'm like, oh, okay. And I underestimated her. I was looking at her skin. I'm like, oh, her skin looks so perfect. It's so beautiful. She's got tiny little pores. How oily could this girl really get? <laughs> well, we were laughing like midday because she was like, I told you that you're right. Totally right. And uh, we were, using some blot powder the rest of the day to just kind of combat some of the shine. But anyway, with her, I actually applied a primer with a brush and looking back, I remember thinking, hmm, I should have listened to her when she told me she was really, really oily and I should have used this technique where I actually pushed the product onto her skin with my fingers, which I rarely do that with my clients to be fully transparent. I know a lot of makeup artists that love to utilize their hands and use their fingers and really melt products onto their client's skin. I don't like to touch 
I just feel like it's an invasion for them. So I like to like always have like a tool as a barrier in between. That's just my thought process. But anyway, we're primed. We're primed. We're gonna have a really great long lasting foundation for our foundation to go on top now. And for foundation, boy, do I have some great options for you if you have oily skin. These foundations are amazing. But let me talk about my number one choice out of this group. And the reason it's the number one is because it's the one I've used the most throughout the years. It's the Dior Forever Foundation. This is a transfer proof 24 hour wear high perfection foundation. This is a very, very long wearing foundation. The finish of it is absolutely gorgeous. It will give you a very full coverage. It is a little bit more matte. So if you have oily skin, this can give you a really nice, fresh, very smooth, matte looking finish to your skin. I've loved this one for years. It's really a classic formula from Dior and not talked about enough in my opinion. Another really great one that I haven't used in quite some time to be fully honest with you, but I have it again in my possession. It's the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This is gonna be good for any one of you who has oily skin, but wants a long lasting finish, a long lasting product in terms of their foundation, but doesn't want to be overly matte. So if you're wanting more of a satin finish, more of like a healthy skin finish, that's also gonna be long lasting for your oily skin, then I would definitely suggest checking this one out. So less matte than the Dior, more skin-like, more has more of like a satin finish to it. So if you're looking for that, the NARS is gonna be the way to go. A newer one that is, again, very new to me that I just recently tried that is fantastic and I think would be a really fantastic option for oily skin. It's it's all, I know this is a high-end one as well, just like the Dior, but this is the Power Fabric Weightless Matte Foundation. It's an up to 24 hour wear from Giorgio Armani. It is a beautiful foundation on. It feels incredibly comfortable on your skin. It feels very, very lightweight to be quite honest. So if you're wanting more of a matte finish that's very, very long wearing, Let's say you work all day, you want your makeup to stay put as an oily skin girly or guy out there. This is a really great one to look into if you want to feel just lightweight and not like you have a mask of makeup on. So those are my three options. The one I'm gonna be applying today is the Dior Forever Foundation and this is the shade 2.5N. So I'm gonna shake this first and then we're gonna talk about tools because tools are very important for all makeup applications, absolutely. But for oily skin, there is a method that I want you to kind of keep in mind to make your products work the best for you. So I'm gonna pump out just about two pumps. Now I designed a brush with BK Beauty. This is my N17 brush. This is more of a natural finish brush that you can get many, many different finishes out of, I will say, but it's not a densely packed brush. This is a very soft brush. It's not densely packed. So when you're applying foundation, this is not gonna be like your packer brush. It's not gonna like pack foundations onto your skin and really press them on with a lot of impact behind it because it's more soft and fluffy. So, although I love you so much, you're not the best fit for this tutorial. What is the best fit is the 106 from BK Beauty, okay? This is like what you're gonna wanna go for. It's fluffy, it is densely packed. However, when you push down it, it still has a little bit of give, so it's kinda like a little bit more of an in-between. What this is gonna do is help to really buff those products into your skin. So if you're someone who has oily skin, usually what comes along with that is larger pores. Now, if you have larger pores, you know it could be hard to buff your makeup into your pores. I know it sounds bad, but that's really what you wanna do. It could be hard if you're using something that's too soft or too fluffy because you need that density behind it to really work the product into your skin. So I'm gonna start in the center of my face and I'm gonna just push this on to my skin. Since this is a bigger brush as well, it's gonna get the job done really nice and quickly. So if you're in a hurry, it's like using a big beauty blender but way better. So pushing it, pushing it. The beauty of this is it's going to really lock this foundation onto your skin. So as you get oily throughout the day, your makeup is not gonna slip and slide because it's properly like pushed into your skin and pushed onto your skin. It's not just sitting on top in a light layer. It's really like fully on your skin. So important if you have oily skin. Something to call out just as an FYI is this foundation does have a little bit of fragrance to it. So if you're sensitive to it, or if you just don't prefer fragrance to your foundation, then I would maybe opt for a different one. But if you can get past it, it'll give you the most beautiful finish to your skin. Wow. I'm gonna pump out one more pump and we're gonna hit the forehead. Same technique, really just getting that product onto your skin. You know, the thing about oily skin is it's not always so much like the products, it's also really the techniques and how you apply those products that's gonna help you to get a beautiful look to your makeup if you have oily skin, if you're struggling with like your makeup lasting all day. You know, usually 
You don't hear people with dry skin talk about their makeup not lasting throughout the day. It's really the oily skin people out there that talk about how their makeup doesn't last, how it doesn't, it's sliding off their skin, it's not looking as good, it's looking too shiny, it's looking this or that. The dry skin people, they have a whole other separate list of, of problems and concerns and that is for another topic or another video. But they're the only people that I don't hear complain about their makeup not lasting, in my experience. Okay, being nice and careful because my brows are clearly on and I don't want to ruin them. So you can see this foundation, it's already leaving me with a pretty matte finish to my skin. It's drying down super quick. Long wear formulas tend to dry down and self-set. That's the beauty of them. You're, so you, you end up needing a lot less powder to set them into place and to like lock them down, which is ideal for oily skin. So if you have oily skin, look for products that are long wearing. And one thing I wanna talk about too is products that are geared towards longevity are usually the same kind of products you wanna look for if you have oily skin. Because again, oily skin people, their makeup just doesn't last as long as like someone who has dry skin or, or normal skin, combination skin. Bring this down my neck just a touch. How gorgeous is that finish? I mean, don't sleep on this foundation. It is such a beautiful matte full coverage foundation. It's beautiful and it's gonna stay put all day. So heat, humidity, oil, rain, shine, doesn't matter, like this foundation will stay put and looking beautiful for so, so long. Okay, moving on. We're gonna move on to bronzer. I wanna talk about the fear of creams if you have oily skin. I hear a lot, again, I talk to a lot of people about makeup on a regular basis and one of the biggest fears that I hear is like, if you have oily skin, you stay away from all the creams and the glowy products and all that stuff. Don't do that. You're missing out. There's just ways to incorporate them and to set them so they work well for your oily skin. So one of the products I want to point out is a cream bronzer. Don't be afraid. If you have oily skin, you're just going to want to set it with a like-minded powder that's mattifying and you're going to want to work in nice, light, thin layers so it dries down. It really sets into your skin. Don't be afraid. This product is definitely for you as well. I'm going to take the same exact brush because this is one of my favorite brushes for cream bronzer, the 106 from BK Beauty. I'm going to tap in, get a decent amount, and you're going to use the same exact technique as you did for your foundation, which is going to be stippling and pushing that bronzer onto now your foundation. I'm working in thin, light layers because the last thing you want to do if you have oily skin is just go on and swipe on a ton of heavy product here's why you're not going to be able to actually lock it down and set it into place so what's going to happen is you're going to produce oil throughout the day and that product is going to slip and slide and move around and be a nightmare to to maintain so thin light layers with all your products and this is like one of my biggest you know beauty uh like philosophies is like you you can do like the most beautiful full coverage full glam but have it feel really lightweight if you just use thin light layers so same thing goes with cream products if you have oily skin it takes a little bit more time and finessing but the outcome is going to be way more long lasting it's going to help to stay put it's going to help to keep that product from moving around it's going to really keep it in place and looking beautiful. So starting slow and just pushing that cream bronzer onto my skin. So it's not that this product is necessarily great for oily skin types, but it's not not. It just depends on how you're working it and how you're applying it onto your skin. But I will say, there are absolutely some cream bronzer formulas that I would stay away from if you do have oily skin. For example, like the ones that feel more like a jelly, more like glowy. Any ones that have like a glowy finish to them, just they're, avoid them. They're not gonna be the best formulas for you. Ones that have more of a satin to matte dry down time or finish, like the Charlotte Tilbury one that I'm using right now, the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks. So I always say those are really good for oily skin if you're using a cream bronzer because they have a really nice satin to matte finish to them, which in turn is gonna help to stay put on your skin. Ones that I would avoid are like the Merit ones, even the Makeup by Mario one, I know it slips around a lot on the skin. Uh, the Patrick Ta one, the cream part of the duo, I don't think is the best for oily skin types. So cream bronzers like those just for like a short example of ones I don't think are the best for oily skin types. Okay, I'm going to push this onto this side, get some warmth onto my skin. Now before I move on to my concealer, I'm actually going to switch to my N16 brush with BK Beauty. I'm going to dip into that same cream bronzer, just picking up a little bit and I'm going to just shade the sides of my nose before I do my concealer. So same thing to be mindful for is like pushing that product onto the side of your nose. We typically get really oily on our noses as you know, oily skin people. So I am blending it out, but I'm also being mindful to push that product on to my skin to really like pack it on for longevity. I'm gonna buff this into the inner part of my tear duct and then slowly bring it into the crease of my eye just for some depth before we go in with our shadows. And then 
because why not? You know I want to do this. Just gonna add a little bit of depth and shading around my lips. The good thing about this Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, by the way, this is the shade number two, is this has a nice neutral base to it. So it works for a lot of different skin undertones and it's just a very neutral, it's an amazing bronzer shade for if you have my skin tone, maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, this shade is a really great universal one. All right, bronzing is done. My skin is warmed up. We're gonna move on to concealer. Now, in all honesty, there's not that many concealers that are geared towards oily skin, in my opinion. There's the NARS Soft Matte. This is fantastic, but I wouldn't recommend this under the eyes. I would recommend this right here for this kind of case, right? Where I have like a random pimple on my chin. So I'm gonna take the shade Tiramisu and I'm gonna grab a small makeup brush. This is from BK Beauty, it's a 207. This is really great for spot concealing. I have a couple of these in my pro kit for when I'm working on set because when I need to spot conceal like an active pimple or an active breakout, I want a brush that's dense and small where I can do pinpoint concealing. So I'm gonna do a little pinpoint concealing on my chin and just push this matte formula onto any areas of redness around that pimple. Since this has a matte finish, it's obviously going to be ideal for anyone that has oily skin. The reason why I don't like this under the eye is it's just, it's too thick in my opinion. It doesn't wear well under the eye as we talk and we squint and we do all these things. It could look really, really heavy and unflattering under the eye. So I love it more for like spot concealing. I'll use it especially around the nose for like touch-ups throughout the day if I feel like I'm getting really red from allergies and things like that. Now, if you have oily skin, you still wanna have longevity even for your concealer under your eye. There are so many hydrating concealers on the market these days. Majority of them will definitely work for oily skin, but I thought I would show you something different that works specifically well for oily skin. Now, there's also a plenty of moisturizing and hydrating concealers that I would not recommend for oily skin. Um, a few being like from Say. I don't think the one from Say is great for anyone that has oily skin. Um, there's one from Charlotte Tilbury that has more like light reflecting particles in it. I don't think that's great for oily skin either, but let's move on. This one is a fantastic choice if you really truly want something that's gonna work well for your skin type. It's the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. It's a 24 hour high coverage multi-use concealer. So you can use it for spot concealing, for highlighting. You can even use this as an eyeshadow base and a primer, which I've used before and it works fantastic if you have oily eyelids. In this case, I'm gonna use it under my eyes. The shade that I'm using is a little bit more yellow than I prefer. It's the shade 2.5, but for the sake of this video, I wanna show you what this looks like. It is a very, very thick concealer, but it still has a nice smoothing effect to it, which is why it's nice for under the eyes. I'm gonna do a little dot here and then I'm gonna do a little bit around my nose and a little, a little bit around my face for some highlighting, even above my chin. To blend it out, I'm gonna use my now clean N16 with BK Beauty, and I'm gonna start by pushing this under my eyes. This concealer literally will not move, just, just a forewarning. It doesn't feel the most incredible on your eyes. I'm just gonna be very, very honest with you. It's a very, very matte, full coverage concealer, but if you have the tolerance for it and you don't mind, and you can just kinda, if you're unbothered by that kind of feeling under your eyes, and you really want something that's gonna work really, really well for oily skin, then I definitely say it's worth checking out. I mean, you could probably jump in a pool with this concealer under your eyes and it's probably not gonna move. I have not tried that, so I can't say for sure, but it, its longevity is really, really impressive. I think between NARS and Makeup Forever, they have some of the best formulas on the market for oily skin people. I'm gonna take the tip of the brush where it has the longer bristles and I'm gonna buff into my creases and buff out any excess concealer so it's not too heavy in that area. Keeping the maximum amount of coverage right here where I really, really need it and a little bit up and kind of sweeping it up towards my temple for a lifted effect. And you can see right away, like it's dry. I mean, it looks like I put a little bit of powder on top. It's so matte and it's so self-setting, which again is just making it ideal for oily skin. So if you have not tried this formula and you really have you've struggled with oily skin and you've struggled finding a good concealer for your skin type, between that one for Makeup Forever and the NARS Soft Matte, I can't think of any other better formulas for your skin type. I'm gonna sweep this around my nose where I have a little excess redness, just like that. We're gonna repeat the same kind of method where we're pushing it and pushing it. We're maximizing the coverage in that area. Now I'm gonna sweep this out. And since I have a little excess, what I'm gonna do is just bring this straight up underneath my brow bone for a little natural brow bone highlight. And let's actually go back to the side and share that concealer to this brow bone. Do a little brow bone highlight. And now we're gonna start to sweep back and forth and blend out that excess product. Less is more. Try to keep that in mind if you're using this concealer, like don't overuse it. In fact, I put way too much on this side of my face than I did on the other side. Okay, sweeping it up. What I am gonna do is go right back to my 106. 
and just melt this back on top. Always using that pressing motion. I'm telling you, this is like absolutely crucial if you have oily skin, is all of these tapping motions and pushing motions. They're gonna just be your best friend. They're gonna make so many other products that are not even necessarily geared towards oily skin work for you. Let's do the rest of the blending. Blend out in between my brows for a little soft highlight effect. I love this brush because it really helps me to get into small areas of my face and really blend in a precise way where I'm not you know, spreading the product in too many areas that I don't want it to go. Blend down the bridge of my nose. Now, before we actually move on and set our makeup with powder, this part is so crucial. This is so crucial. I have two of my all-time favorite long-lasting setting sprays. These are always in my pro kit. This one, probably no surprise. It's the On Till Dawn setting spray from One Size Beauty. This is like, it's no joke. It really is no joke. It's like shellacking your makeup onto your face. It will not move. It will stay put so incredibly well. I mean, it's the best long-lasting setting spray that I've ever used, to be honest. It's very, very reminiscent of the Kryolan Professional, which also comes in an aerosol spray, like a hairspray. Very similar. I'm sure it's like very similar ingredients. I haven't used that one in a long time, but one of my besties is still obsessed with that formula. But shout out to my friend Michelle, who still uses that. I love you for that. So the other one, and the one that we're going to use first, this is going to be like my in-between setting my makeup, and it's like last round of setting spray. It's gonna be like a, a first round of setting spray to really like soak into my skin and to really set all those base products that we just applied before we go in with powders and all that stuff. You wanna layer your setting spray if you have oily skin, because if you have oily skin, you're usually, typically speaking, battling longevity with your makeup. So to keep your makeup on all day, or at least much, much longer, layer your setting spray. Layer the amounts that you're putting on. Don't just finish your makeup with it, layer it and incorporate it in throughout your makeup application. So for the first round, this one's more wet. This one feels more like a sticky hairspray. So we're saving that one for very, very last, okay? I don't layer this one, just to be honest. This is the only one that I like to layer throughout the day for longevity. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is my little mini one that I travel with. I have a full size in my pro kit. So I'm gonna shake it and we're gonna do one even layer throughout. To speed up this process, I'm gonna dry it down with my Half Magic fan because there's really not that much you can do in between when your face is soaking wet. So now we can move on to the eyes, okay? We're not gonna set with powder yet. I'm gonna let this chill and really still soak and dry down. And then we're gonna start with the eye makeup. So let's get into eye makeup. One product that I didn't like it first. If you if you know, you know. If you see my channel, you probably know my thoughts on this. Now I love it. <laughs> I was just using it incorrectly. You need a really small amount of this Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Primer. It's in the shade Invisa Pink. It's like a very hint, slight hint of pink. It's, it's pretty much invisible, okay? You're gonna use this, but before you do, you're gonna blend out any creases on your eye, just like that. So now that we've buffed out any creases, the best thing you can do for your oily skin and your oily eyelids I promise you, just trust me on this, is powder them. Just go in with a powder. It could be a loose powder. I love the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder for this, but I also love the Fenty Beauty Matte Press Powder. Like this is like a touch-up powder. It's amazing for blotting throughout the day. I take my N14. It's like my small little domed powder brush or can, it's a multitasker. Let's not, let's not just call it a powder brush. It's like amazing for everything, but I'm gonna press this onto my eyelids and fully mattify my eyelids before I go in with my eyeshadow base, okay? This is for like severely oily eyelids. So if you don't have severely oily eyelids, maybe skip this step or at least just do like a very thin light wash of it. But I'm gonna press it on. I'm not really swiping back and forth. I'm really like pushing that powder onto my eyelids. Now we're gonna take a small amount of the Fenty. That's it. That's really, since I've learned the difference, that's all you need for your eyes. Same brush, I'm gonna go back to my N16. This is one of my favorite brushes for any kind of eyeshadow primers or bases because it just gets the job done quick and easy. It does have that tapered pointed tip, so it allows you to get into the inner nook of your eye, like that little inner corner with ease. So push it all over just like that, and then don't be surprised. We're gonna go back with one more thin layer of the Fenty Matte Powder and the N14. We're gonna set that, and now you just created the most matte, budge-proof, base for your eyeshadows. We're gonna create a simple eye makeup look. This is not really about like an eyeshadow look necessarily. It's just more about like the techniques I want you to use and like the products I want you to use if you have oily skin and oily eyelids. But for a pretty eyeshadow look, I love this palette. It's an all matte palette. It's from the Melt and Bailey Sarian Fatally Yours collection. I believe this is limited edition. So if you can still get it, I would definitely hop out and get it right away because it's a really beautiful formula of striking mattes. 
I'm gonna go simple. I'm just gonna dip into this first shade right here with my N13. And we're just gonna build a nice natural eye makeup look. Just something quick and simple and flattering. But I do love this palette. I love the shades. I think they're so unique. They're incredibly pigmented. They're really great formulas that are really easy to blend. Oh, that first shade is so pretty. Just creating a nice soft crease, just like that. When you have oily skin, you can do any kind of eye makeup look. It's just gonna be all about what you prep your eyelids with. We're gonna put this palette down for a second. And then I wanna show you a new pencil that I really like for longevity. So again, oily skin, longevity, they kind of go hand in hand. This one's from Give and I had never tried their eyeliners before, but they sent them to me in PR. So thank you, Give. But it's the Line It Up 24 hour gel pencil. This is a black pencil in the shade Spiderwebs. We're gonna use this and we're going to do a small amount on the top lash line. Now, if you have oily eyelids, you know that if you put something creamy on the base of your eyes and you don't set it or you don't lock it in with some kind of powder to keep it on, you know that the transfer from here to here is real. It's like a real problem and it sucks and it's very difficult to fix throughout the day. Like once it happens, there's not a whole lot you can do. So what we're gonna do is grab my angle brush. This is my N11 brush with BK Beauty. This is a large, flat, stiff angle brush. So what we're gonna do is pack on a like-minded shade even though this is a long wear pencil, it doesn't matter. It's a gel, it's creamy, and it, it probably will move. More than likely, it's gonna move and transfer because it's on the top lash line. So what I'm gonna do first is take my brush without any product and literally push it down and start to manipulate it into, of course, a little natural wing shape. But what this is doing is it's kind of picking up that excess amount of gel product. So you're left with a more thin layer of it, which again, thin layers all throughout your, your makeup application because if you have like a thick layer of this gel eyeliner, the, it's more than likely to transfer from the top to your actual eyelid. All right, so we have a nice little base going on. Now we're gonna dip back into the eyeshadow palette and use the shade Lead. It's a rich matte black shadow. I'm gonna dip into it. I'm gonna tap off the excess just to be safe. And then I'm gonna push this on top to really lock that wing into place. Like just lock it. It's, it's the same idea as setting your makeup with powder. Same exact idea. Let me finish up this side. And you'll notice I'm not sweeping back and forth. I'm stamping it. This brush really is designed to be more of a stamping brush, like a quick, easy way to stamp on a, a wing liner with like minimal effort. With whatever's left over, I brought it inside to the inner portion of my eye. We're gonna repeat the same step on the other side and then we'll move on. It's so pretty, babe. Your makeup looks beautiful. Really? Yeah, it's really pretty. You're gonna add a little highlight on the center of your brow. Halo, halo highlight. Now that our wings are on, they're set, they're locked in, we're good to move on. We're, good to, we're really good to move on. We're in a great place. <laughs> we're gonna move on to mascara. And now that we don't have to worry about that transfer with the eyeliner, the same thing is gonna apply to mascara. But I have another trick that I'm gonna throw in if you have really oily eyelids, just as like a safe bet, a safe measure to take. I have a new favorite mascara, like one of many new favorite mascaras, I should say. It's the Smashbox Super Fan Fanned Out Mascara. Every time I wear this, Mitch compliments my lashes. He's like, baby, your lashes look so good. <laughs> He's laughing. He's like nodding his head. They do. They always look so good when I wear this mascara. So I'm really loving it. I just got so derailed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really loving this mascara. Long story short, let's apply some mascara, which has nothing to do with oily skin at all, but it's going to complete this eye makeup look. And then we're throwing that extra tip after this is done. Okay, now that the mascara is on, if you truly have oily eyelids, you know the struggle of anything transferring. So whether it's your eyeliner, your wing liner, your lashes, this is something I see constantly and I get asked about this and like how you can solve this problem on a regular basis. If you have oily eyelids and you have also long lashes, you probably run into, or you probably encounter this problem where your lashes hit your eyelids and you get that mascara transfer. I get it all the time, all the time. It's super frustrating. A really great tip that I learned a long time ago is to take some translucent powder. This is my favorite powder for oily, like truly oily skin. It's the Makeup Forever HD powder. Super old school, but totally gets the job done. I'm gonna take my N16 and use the tip of the brush to pick up a little bit of powder right there. It's a tiny, tiny amount. And you're gonna lightly dust the tips of your lashes, okay? It's not gonna be foolproof, but it's gonna help out. Now, of course, you know, like, blob a bunch of powder onto your beautiful lashes, but you wanna just get like the very tips of your lashes because that's what hits ultimately your eyelids and creates that transfer. So 
little tip to throw in there. It's something I used to use on brides when I used to do bridal makeup on a regular basis. Let's switch back to skin. If you have oily skin, my same exact thoughts I have for cream bronzer goes for cream blushes. Don't avoid them. Don't miss out. They're incredible formulas. I would just say skip the liquid formulas and skip the overly dewy, glossy, balmy formulas because those are not going to work well for your skin. They're just not. They're going to create a mess on your on your base and all those products. They're just not going to work the best for your skin type. Never say never if you want to try them. I'm, who am I to tell you not to do it? But they're not going to work the best for your skin type. I picked out three formulas that I think are really amazing formulas for oily skin in terms of cream blushes. The first is more expensive and high end. It's the West Metelier Cream Blush. This is a mini size. Great formula. I use it on all my clients in my kit. I never have a problem. The other one is the Danessa Myricks one. This is the Yummy Skin one, I believe. Yeah, it's a Yummy Skin Cream Blush. These work really well. I've only ever used it on myself, so I can only speak from my personal experience with this one. The next one, I have a few shades in my Pro Kit, so I can speak both personally and professionally with this formula. And this is the one I'm actually gonna put on. It's the LYS High Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush. So it's a cream blush, but the finish, it's all about that finish. It's a satin to matte cream finish. So it's ideal for oily skin. I love this formula. I've said it many times. I think it's a really outstanding formula. And for this product, I'm not so worried about packing it and pushing it into my skin. So I'm gonna grab my favorite, my N17 with BK Beauty. I'm gonna pick up some of this cream blush on the lighter fiber side of it. I'm gonna work it in. And for safe measure, I'm also going to push it and pre-blend it onto the top of my hand like that. And then we're gonna push this onto our skin. So again, it's all about your techniques, right? So pushing, even though this is not like a densely packed brush, it doesn't matter. You could still push this and use it in a stippling motion, which I love to do, to really push that product onto your skin for longevity. So it stays put, so it really sticks and adheres to your skin and it's not just sitting on top. That's that's really the main reason. You don't want your product sitting on top of your skin because if you have oily skin, once that shine starts to come through and that oil starts to get produced, it's gonna be like a slide. Your makeup's just gonna slide right off. So pushing it, but how beautiful is that finish, right? It's skin-like because it's a cream, but it has that soft matte satin finish to it. It looks gorgeous. And honestly, this formula works really well for oily skin because it's very long lasting. So it's not one of those like, initially you put it on, it looks beautiful and it's like glowy and it's minimalist and all that stuff. If you have oily skin, those kind of textures just don't work well for you. You know, that's just like the reality. It's something I've had to realize, you know? Okay, so push it on just like that. And with that, that is our last cream and liquid product. Now we get to fully go in with our powders. And I'm so excited because I have, I have many powders to share. Like I, I started out by sharing this one. This is amazing from Fenty for touch up. So this is going to be like your, don't leave it at home. Take it with you. This is going to be like your best friend when you're on the go. So after you finish your makeup application, take this amazing powder and throw it in your purse, throw it in your bag, throw it in your pocket, wherever you keep your products for touch ups, take this with you. This is going to be your on the go BFF. The product I want you to set your under eyes with and also just your T-zone, anywhere you could think of. This powder is one of my all-time favorites for, I use it honestly for anyone, but I think this works especially well for anyone who has larger pores, more texture and oily skin. It's a Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. This is the shade Cupcake. It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna take some cupcake. Now, before you set your under eyes, this is very, very important for anyone, not just oily skin, for anybody out there. Make sure you go in with your brush and just buff out any creases that might've happened before you set your makeup and lock those into place. So I'm just gonna gently buff out with my N16. There we go. That took off the excess product. And now I'm gonna go back to my N14 brush. This is my favorite brush to set my under eyes. So I'm gonna dip into Cupcake and take a good amount onto my hand. And this is what I love to do. I like to work that product into my brush, tap off the excess, press this under the eyes and just lock it in. So I'm not going back and forth. Again, same same motion throughout this entire tutorial is I'm just gonna do a pushing and tapping motion with all the products. This powder really is amazing for smoothing your skin, for oil control, it's, a, it's great for touch-ups, it's great for anything, honestly. It's probably one of the best powders, I think, out there. One thing I wanna point out, just like the foundation, it does have some fragrance to it, so if that bothers you, just something to keep in mind. I think it smells incredible. I'm gonna take a little bit more, same brush. I'm just going to hit my T-zone. I'm not going crazy. I'm not applying this all over. You can adjust this to whatever you feel like you need for your oily skin. Everyone's oily skin is different. So if you need it all over, you could take this powder all over. 
However, wait till the end because I'm gonna show you one more trick that involves powder. So for now, I'm just hitting the T-zone and that is powder. Now, one more colored powder before we move on to fully setting this makeup. I wanna lock in that cream bronzer that we used, the Charlotte Tilbury one, with a like-minded powder bronzer that's going to just ensure that it stays put all day long. It's gonna lock it into place and really keep it nice and pigmented. So if you have a hard time with your makeup staying pigmented and you feel like it fades throughout the day, always layer your creams and your powders with each other. So layer a powder on top of the cream, it will lock it in, it'll keep it fully pigmented, it will keep it from looking dull and faded throughout the day. So I'm gonna take the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. This is a more matte, but very lightweight matte powder bronzer. It's in the shade Light Medium. I'm gonna grab my N15 powder brush, tap off the excess, and we're gonna just push this on top of the cream bronzer. No buffing, no swiping. I mean, you can minimally if you'd like to, but you really just need to tap this on and layer it on top of the cream bronzer. So a little bit on the cheek, just a little bit. Now one thing I love to do, and I don't wanna skip it, is just take a little bit of that same bronzer and use my N12 brush just to sweep this on the bottom lash line. Of course, you can also go with the eyeshadow that you use in the crease. I just always like to take my bronzers that I'm using, my powder bronzers, and just carry them on the bottom lash line for a really nice natural look. There we go. Bronzer is done. Bronzer is set and locked into place. That's all locked in and dialed in. Now we can go in with another coat of the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. I'm gonna shake it up again. I get one more even coat throughout my entire face. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna feel very wet. That's the point. If you're not fully saturating your face with your setting spray, you're not really doing it right. And there's really no point. <laughs> Unless you're really fully drenching your skin, it's not enough for your setting spray to do its thing. So one little coat, it's not gonna do anything. So if you're ever wondering, like if you're at home, you're like, what's setting spray? What's the point? Like it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference if you're not using enough. If you're using enough, like the proper amount and your skin feels wet after, that's when you're using enough. Now here's the best trick of all the tricks, okay? Once you've set your makeup and you did that final, final round of setting spray, well, almost, we have one more round. This is the trick of all tricks if you have oily skin. Take a powder puff. And this is what you're gonna wanna take with you when you're on the go. This is what you're gonna wanna take in your purse or your bag or whatever. You wanna take your powder puff and your matte Invisimat powder from Venti. These are gonna travel with you along with your lip product of the day, right? But take your powder puff, take a tiny, tiny amount of the Makeup Forever HD powder. This is the powder of all powders if you have oily skin. If you have oily skin, this is literally the best powder that you could buy. It is super fine. It's like fine dust in the wind right now. You're gonna work into your powder puff a tiny amount. That's all you need. And you're gonna press it into the areas of your face that you know you still need that extra bit of powder, okay? So just press it, press it. It's a light layer. It's gonna feel like nothing. It's gonna feel really silky and nice on your skin. And it's going to lock in that makeup, that entire base of makeup, just like that. Now, once this is on, this is when you go in with your powder highlighter. This is the best part. This is when we add skin-like shine back to your more matte, oily skin makeup routine. For highlighter, I'm gonna use one of my favorite ones of all time. It's really old school. They still sell it. It's still a phenomenal highlighter. It's the Mineralized Skin Finish Highlighter from MAC. It's in the shade Soft and Gentle. This is like, it's gonna bring that healthy, glowy, skin-like quality to your more matte, oily skin makeup routine. It's gonna bring that life that liveliness back, right? That glow back without being oily and without taking away the long lasting effect of the products that you just applied to your oily skin. So it's gonna bring that life back to your skin. I'm gonna take the powder side, the darker fiber side of the N17 brush to apply this gorgeous, never goes out of style in my opinion, highlighter. So we're gonna hit all the usual places, any areas of the face so we wanna add some more dimension and some glow, all the high points. These are the areas of the face that when the sun hits or like the flash hits, you just get that beautiful glow. So it's up to you how much glow you wanna add back to your skin and your matte complexion. If you wanna keep it all matte, no one's judging you. But if you wanna add that glow back in, I highly recommend it because it brings the dimension and the life back to your more matte products. And honestly, there's there's so many powder highlighters that work well for oily skin. This is just one that's off the top of my head that I've used for, I don't know, 10 years. And I've, I've just loved it for ages. But the Charlotte Tilbury one is really nice too. The new powder ones from Charlotte Tilbury are really nice. The Rare Beauty one is nice. I can't really can't think of one powder highlighter that I don't like for oily skin. So adding that glow back in, I'm gonna smile. I'm gonna hit the very center of the apple on my cheek, just like that. To add a little more, give my cheeks a little juicy glow. Okay, now we're gonna even do a little bit of Cupid's Bow highlighting, even though I'm not a huge fan of this, but it's gonna add some like 
Again, more like life back to my skin. I'm gonna hit the very top of my chin and just, again, you're just gonna bring that healthy glow back to your matte complexion. I love to hit the tip of my nose and the very top of the bridge. You wanna leave this in between because you don't wanna look like you have a landing strip of highlighter, in my opinion. Have a balance, break it up, leave the center matte. Okay, let's do a little brow bone just like I did on the other side. And then also you wanna hit just a little bit on your, the very side of your forehead, right? Just like that. So when you're in the light, you got that healthy glow back to your skin. It's a powder form, it's very thin, it's very lightweight, so it's gonna not take away that longevity with your matte looking makeup. And that is how you bring glow back in. Oh, but I forgot a very crucial, how did I forget this? I forgot a crucial spot. I'm gonna go back to that little 207 from BK Beauty, take my soft in general and apply this all along the tear duct of my eye because it wouldn't be highlighting if we didn't do this area of the face. There we go. Maybe a little bit more of my nose, push it in. And now we're highlighted, we're glowing. Now before we go into lip, don't forget, just like we set that cream bronzer with a powder bronzer, I know it's gonna feel like an excessive amount of makeup. There are thin layers though that I cannot stress that enough. It's gonna seem like a lot, but it's not gonna feel like a lot on your skin. So I'm gonna go with a favorite powder blush of mine. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Powder Blush in Mellow Mauve. I love this shade so much. And I'm gonna apply this with my N15 powder brush, tap off the excess. You could either do this step before you're highlighting or after, it doesn't really matter. Because regardless, your highlighter is gonna show through or it's going to show on top. Mm, that blush is so pretty. I'm gonna take a little bit across my nose because I love to do this. But again, this is something I normally do with cream blushes, but for my oily skin people out there, take the powder instead and do the same technique. I love this color. It is so pretty. Sweep a little bit across the forehead for some more warmth. All right. Now, before we do our last and final round of setting spray, which is gonna be the On Till Dawn from One Size Beauty, I'm just gonna throw on a really simple, minimal lip, okay? It's not really about the lip. Any, it doesn't matter what your skin type is, you can wear any kind of lip, unless you have really dry lips, that's a whole other topic. So I'm just gonna throw on a really nice, pretty lip. I'm gonna use the Makeup by Mario Lip Pencil in the shade Hue. Now, to stay a little bit more on theme, I'm going to use the newest formula from Anastasia Beverly Hills, I'm, I'm still not sure how much I'm loving this formula. It's a little bit on the thick side, less is more. This is the shade Kiss and it's the Lip Velvets. I'm gonna apply a little thin layer of this. And then I like to take my finger and rub it in. For a little extra comfort on top, I'm gonna apply a very thin amount of this West Atelier lip gloss. Just more in the center. Again, nothing to do with oily skin, just a pretty lip combo that I really have been enjoying. And now our final step in this tutorial that is all about the best products for oily skin. I really hope you find this video helpful. I'm going to be setting my entire face with the strongest setting spray that I've ever tried in my entire life, the One Size Beauty On Till Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. Keywords to look for, mattifying, waterproof, all gonna be your best friends if you have oily skin. So. Shake it up really well and hold your breath. Don't open your eyes. Count to five in your head and then you're done. Your lip color is Money, you like it? Money. Isn't that pretty? Unbelievable. I hope you enjoyed this video all about products that work the best for oily skin. If you have experience with this, if you have oily skin and you have found products that work best for your skin type, I would love to hear what they are. Leave them in the comments below. If you like videos like this, I have plenty more that came from. You can check them out right here. Like this video if you have oily skin and you can relate. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I'll see you soon. Bye.